Well, consent matters because consent is about the reduction of violence and harm against ourselves and against others. Um, consent is really about how do we choose to be in relationship to our own bodies and in relationship with other bodies. And that uh, relationship is about willingly agreeing to enter into some kind of interaction, relationship, or anything with uh, not just myself, but with other people as well. So consent is important because it first helps me to understand what I want to do and what I don't want to do. And if I want to do something, and I consent to it, that feels good. If I don't want to do something, but yet I still consent to it, that begins to be violent towards myself and others. So I think it matters because it's a way of us loving, respecting, and treating each other gently. I think one myth about consent is that it's simple. We tend to think about it as though it's a one-time thing, uh, that it doesn't have to be revisited, that it isn't part of a conversation and a continued engagement with our partner or with whoever we're talking to or thinking about in that situation. I think it's important to understand that consent is relational, that it involves a back and forth, that it involves a lot of curiosity, continued revisiting, checking in, that it isn't simply a, a business transaction uh, or a one-and-done conversation. Well, one myth about consent is that I cannot withdraw my consent after consenting to something. So sometimes we believe that if I say yes to something, then that's a complete yes that's going to be enacted for like ever. That yes is only uh, validated from moment to moment, and that validation is based upon my comfort in the situation. So if I agree or consent to being in a sexual relationship or you know, in some type of arrangement like that, then I may consent um, initially, but I can withdraw my consent one minute into it, five minutes into it, or towards the end. So my consent is conditional upon how I feel safe in the moment. In order for me to uphold the inherent worth and dignity of other people, and in order for me to provide justice, equity, and compassion in my relationships with other humans, I have to have consent in those relationships. My experience of Episcopal services um, is that everyone goes up to the altar to drink from the same cup of wine and eat bread that's been broken by the pastor and blessed. Drinking from the same cup actually reminded me more about the meaning behind Eucharist, which is that all human beings are part of one body, the body of Christ. And we are drinking from the cup because we are combining our souls and participating in something together. And I think that meaning sometimes can be lost when we're drinking from different cups. When I was thinking about consent and how that relates to my faith, I was thinking that if we're all part of one body, if one part of our body harms another uh, without their consent, we're really harming ourselves. I am a Buddhist teacher and minister, and in Buddhism, we really believe in the reduction of violence and harm. So if I really am committed to reducing harm and violence, then I have to really commit to consent. doing the work of activism and changing the culture is allowing people to express their confusion, is allowing people to talk through their confusion and understand ultimately that consent is about the impact that it has on both people, whether that's positive with joyful consent or whether that can be really traumatic and negative. And I think the only way to really get a deeper understanding of consent is to have open and honest conversations. Part of my draw to doing both domestic violence and sexual assault work, as well as the current work I do around reproductive justice, is opening up conversations that are tricky in the church and encouraging people of faith to recognize that, sure, it might feel awkward, it might feel hard, and yet all of these conversations really matter. And if you can't go to your faith community, and ask questions about consent or about your body or about your beliefs, where are you supposed to be able to go that can really hold you and love you and lift you up while you're seeking to know yourself more deeply?
I think patriarchy is the central system that has perpetuated sexual-based violence against women, against people who um, occupy gender uh, expansive um, identities, and also violence against other men. Patriarchy is this one system, I think, that we will not survive until we confront. We have to look at the ways in which men, in particular, are conditioned to have power over other people's bodies. Um, we have to look at the ways in which boys are conditioned into the system um, that is directly related to how they will relate to other people's bodies as they grow older. So much of our abolishing and undoing of patriarchy has to be about essentially mourning, that we have to go into a mourning that helps us to let go of these conditionings that many of us were raised with in order to let them go and to enter into a space and a period that's essentially post-patriarchal. Post-patriarchal meaning that we are in power with not empower over anyone.